feet, right? So we're gonna let the, it's not gonna do anything else on her. I'm just gonna let her be here. And if she checks out, see how she's doing pressure, she's getting scared, she's snorting louder. If she checks out, we're just gonna redirect her. Just like uh, other drills. So I'm gonna ask her to take a step forward. I'm gonna ask her to stop. It's okay, she shifted back. She didn't try to go by it though, right? She's still staying here, she's not leaving. Cool. She is terrified of those things flopping right now. But I said, whoa, right? And even though I asked her to take one step and then said, whoa, immediately again, she did it. And she's being obedient. So you know, what do you think I should do here? I want everyone's answer and then, we're, then I'm gonna do what I would do. So Helona, should I reach for the flag or should I drive past it? Valerie. have you get off the horse and bring the flag to her. Nope. <laughs> Pass. 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 So you're all wrong. I'm going to ask her to side pass. I'm going to ask her to side pass, through it, but not with her face, with her body. He, she faced it. Shows me she's not ready. If she would have side passed to it, then I reach for the flag. If she doesn't side pass to it, we go past it again. She will tell me when she is ready. And I'm also getting a lot of other good things out of this. For example, circles, right? We're jogging tiny circles and we're working on that. We're also working on take a step and stop when I was doing that drill. And we're going to work on, well, and then we're going to side pass them over here. See, the wind moving them is what's scaring her. As long as she's brave enough not to check out, I'm going to give her more slack and let it be more of her idea. Now, we'll get a little bit closer. A little closer, we'll. A little closer, we'll. I mean, she's being as obedient as they come, which shows me things, right? One, she's listening. So if I grab this flag and it scares the crap out of her, unless it is the American flag, which is why we don't practice with the American flag, you throw it down, and you say, Whoa. I didn't hear everybody. Whoa. Whoa! Exactly. Because if you build this whole thing up on the premise of whoa, you won't get run off with. If you take this horse, that horse, or that horse, or that horse, or any of these horses, that when you say whoa, it takes all the pressure away. It, it doesn't mean you can constraining all that energy when they get scared. That's the release. Just get rid of what scares them. Don't try to hold on to the flag and be like, they'll get used to it eventually. Sure, that worked in the 80s before there was real horsemanship. You know what else in the 80s? That every single one of these Mustangs here would have been roped off another horse, roped up next to it from me to this post, and they would have bit its ear, thrown a saddle on it, jumped it on its back, and then that person would have bumped the alley and throw me the lead rope, and we would have been off to the races and broken it out. And I've broke horses that way. You know who taught me to break horses that way? My dad and my grandfather. When I was growing up, I was their test dummy. I got on everything they got. They would go to the sales and buy 20, and then I would get them all broke, and we would take them all back to the sale the next month. That's like how they made a living for a while, using me as their test dummy. 
Tyra Smeller, who here knows who that is? She sells a bunch of horses and breeds a bunch of horses. Well, she owns that little two-year-old and the four-year-old. So, I met her when I was five years old. She was at a horse sale that my dad had me ride his pony to. And she had three miniature studs that just led, and she asked me if I would ride them. And she paid me $5 a head, and I've been riding horses for Kyra since I was five from that day. And the more times I got bucked off, the more money she said she got for those horses. I kept getting back on. I don't remember. She says that's what happened. I don't know. So now that she's super relaxed, she's not even looking at those flags anymore, right? She has no idea that this is still the goal. So we're going to pick her up. You see, she still wants to face. But this time, she didn't check out. She's just moving her hip. She's not trying to leave. So I'm going to bring her and make her look at him. Now I'm not pulling up. She's looking at him because I told her to. Now I might reach out and touch him and then leave it. And then I might reach for it again and then leave it. Oh, oh. Now, the objective is when you reach and grab it, to not bring it to your horse immediately. If you keep it an arm's length away, how far was it away when I to reach it? And this is where me and you differ, Tim. When you said get off and present it to him, if I can get an arm's length away and touch the flag, I can get an arm's length away and grab the flag, but I can also keep it in that comfort zone for that horse by keeping it an arm's length away. If I would have grabbed it and brought it to her immediately, she would have run off until I said, whoa, and then she would have stopped. Even when she was side passing, what happened when I said, whoa? She stopped. That's why I put the importance on that. So she doesn't even realize that I've brought this all the way into her body from an arm's length away. I don't know if even if you guys realized that I was slowly creeping it in. Now it's touching her. She has no idea because I didn't make it an all at once deal. I rode by it, I stood by it, I talked about it, I made her look at it, I grabbed it, I held it out here, I brought it back here. Now, I should be able to do this because this has become a comfort zone, right? What's the next uncomfortable part that the horses don't like? Picking it up above them. Now, I would normally have these rubber banded when I first start picking them up, so there is no flapping, but I trust Casino pretty good so I'll take and do it the old way and I'll just stick it in my boot right now once it's in my boot it's secure right so then I can if I have to get both hands back on the rein so what I'm gonna do is while it's in my boot and the reins are where behind the horn because I can't lose them that way if we get in a bad spot, my hand should muscle memory know where the horn is. So now I'm just gonna unroll it. She's so unconcerned about this, she's looking off the other way. And she's never had a flag on her. And we've never done anything besides leave a walk. It hasn't been a big ordeal and it hasn't been scary, right? because I broke it down into pieces and I didn't go to the next step until the first step was understood. But people think that if you do it that way, this takes a long time and it doesn't. It just takes being patient. Now, all I'm gonna do is tighten my reins where I have a hold of her if I need to. And we're gonna take the same exact thing that we just did on that corner, which was what? Whoa. Whoa. First three steps, steps like that, like at a walk. And then typically you should be fine. We'll do the exact same thing we've already done.
of the things I also like to do is be kind of stupid with one. So I'll pit it up on my hip and jump it in front of them, right? And then I'll take it away and I'll put it back, right? I try not to touch them with it until I've carried it at least a half a dozen times. I think that by touching them with it sometimes or letting the flag flap and hit them, you make them think that it's scary. Whereas if you make them get used to it being around them and above them first, then when you touch them with it, they don't care. So I'll bring it back down into my boot, right? And I'll let it, I'll let it go right over her head, but I try not to let it touch her, right? And I'll even bring it back here behind her butt where it's behind her. But when we do all this stuff, we are not moving, right? Now, a horse like Turbo and a horse like Ten Bears and a horse like, really the only two kind of higher strung horses in your group, if they get nervous, or even like your horse Freckles, Amy, if they get nervous, what I will do a lot of the times is I'll let them walk a circle if they're kind of nervous, but So like I'll make them turn into it. So if they get scared of it, they'll go that way, but they see it. So if she was scared of it when she was not, I'll just kind of let it go across here. I'll just put it up there. But you have to be cognizant enough to know that if something bad were to happen, you gotta be able to throw those reins over that horn and pull this down. Okay? So that you don't get in a bad spot. Another thing, if you have a horse that's really afraid of the flag part. One of the things that I've done with a lot of horses is I would just grab a stick and carry a stick around. Yeah. You carry, carry a stick around, around for a little bit, eventually you start to add maybe like a uh, paper towel or like a hand towel or like the towel that Tim has in his belt and just tie that to the top of the horse, small, like I'm assuming. And then just slowly but surely get fixed. But she was a great example of that. She wasn't terrified of it, but she wasn't, she was, there's no way I was going to walk and grab it at the beginning, she never left. And, and if I would have, don't worry, I can snap it up off there, and I can tell her, but she can't buck me off, and she doesn't buck. She didn't buck the first time I rode her. Right, that's the thing, but I don't want to put her in a situation where she thinks she has to. What I want her to do is to let me show her that it's okay. Snatch it. I didn't go around and grab it and walk out of her chase or hit her with it. Or my favorite is when people try to make it touch her nose. You know what the most sensitive part on your horse's body is? It's nose. You know what you touch your hand with first? It's nose. You know what you should touch a horse with first? Anyone know? That's right. Where are they most secure? Because when it storms, they turn their butt. Not just that, but that's where their most protection is. They, you are the least amount of threat to a horse, whether you're him or Richard. But you know there's not much difference. But they're safe if you're touching your butt. Their vital organs are furthest away. Their most dangerous weapon is their hind legs, right? Their what are the horses' two main predators? With mud things. Lion, lion, and a bear? Yep. Yeah. Where do lions both go for? Oops. There's not much difference between a bear and a thing. Right here. They both try to take away the windpipe. All cats jump on their head and bite here. Watch a lion or tiger on National Geographic. Bears are the same. They swipe the face and bite. So if their butts to it and they're really scared, I'll back a horse up to something. And let behind them. And once they accept it behind them, you'd be surprised on how fast they'll accept it in front of them. But not the opposite. Like I'm not even picking up these reins. 
I don't need to. She's accepted it. Who thinks I can touch her with it? You think I can touch her with it? In her face. Or her butt. You think I can touch her both? showing you guys this is good. What is people don't think that okay once I can pick it up it's safe. Now, like, now my horse can carry a flag. Yeah, when it's not out there in front of her, it's still, it's still above, above her, but it's barely.
Stop thing. That's, a, that's a vast improvement about what 20 minutes? Yeah. Doesn't take okay. long. People think that it takes a long time. Some, some horses it, it will, will take a long time. time. But for this little drill right here, if everybody wants to try to do that with their horse, now which one of these which of these horses carry flag guards? She's carried flag. He's carried a flag before, so I'm not gonna say I'm pretty sure I've carried a flag on ten bears for you. Yeah, it looked dicey, it. but I did see you do it. <laughs> but it was the American flag at your house, and he does.